Welcome back to r slash landlords from hell where we read stories about the worst landlords imaginable and maybe after hearing these stories you feel a little better about your own landlord. If you are new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe to join our awesome community and without any further ado let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled EB Landlords from Hell Part 1. When my husband and I were planning our wedding, we were also looking for a new place to live. The place we were living in was a horrible gang infested hellhole and the house was decrepit. When it was just us, we could handle it, but we were planning on having kids and there was no way we would raise them there. On top of that, the house we were living in had recently been sold and the new landlord didn't want us to move out. He deliberately sabotaged several potential homes we looked at by telling the realtors we were horrible tenants, basically trapping us. My godson's neighbors, the EBs, just bought a house and were going to rent their condo out. We met them, they understood our landlord was a jerk and they said they knew we were great, place looked good, they started the section 8 paperwork, planned to move into the place a couple days after the wedding. We had no idea what we were in for. EB number 1, which by the way guys stands for entitled BITCH, asked my husband to help him with a few repairs. Okay, sounds reasonable. Except it turned out he had started to remodel the entire place, rendering it uninhabitable. We had a month and a half before the wedding, we had already given notice. He manipulated my husband and our friends. Here's more, EB number 2 was a piece of work when we met she claimed to be a direct descendant of a singer of the Declaration of Independence, a guy with the same fairly common last name who never had any children and believe this gave her some sort of exalted bloodline. The second time we met she told me in exquisitely graphic, completely unasked for detail about her extensive gastrointestinal birth defects, her irritable bowel syndrome and her fecal incontinence. There was literally no reason for me to know any of this. I had two miscarriages when we were living there, when I told her about the first one, she decided that that was the perfect time to go on for 10 minutes about how much she wanted a baby. I was stunned. That was bad, but what she did when I had my second miscarriage was worse. I hadn't told many people when I got pregnant the second time for obvious reasons. They showed up for the rent check the day after I lost the baby. Took EB a couple minutes to notice that I couldn't stand upright and was chalk white. EB number 2, what is wrong with you? Me, I had a miscarriage. EB number 2, accusingly, what? You never told us you were pregnant. How far along were you? Me, 10 weeks. EB number 2, oh you were so close. I was well aware my baby died two weeks before this, I totally didn't need this reminder. She said it in this syrupy affected pseudo sympathetic voice. More EB landlord bullcrap to come, stay tuned. And guys in the next couple of weeks or days we will see, I might make some more videos about horrible landlords which I think is a pretty interesting topic so please let me know in the comments if you are also interested in stories about awful landlords. Part 2 of the story, second installment of the EB Landlords from Hell. I already mentioned how they manipulated us into working for free on the remodeling. We were not the only ones they had done this too. They had a little house on the other end of town that needed a lot of work. They got my godson's family to do a lot of work on the place. They waited to get paid and waited and waited. There was one excuse after another as to why they were not getting paid. Months went by. Then the pipes in the house burst that winter and the EBs accused my godson of forgetting to shut the water off after plumbing work he had done, even though it had been months since he had been in the house and we all knew the EBs had been the last people working there. After threatening to sue, they finally said they wouldn't make my godson's family pay for the plumbing repair, they would just take it out of the money they were owed. Two of my friends were about to be evicted, their credit was horrible, they knew it would be hard to find a new place and were facing homelessness. Enter the EBs with an offer for them to live in the partially finished house as live-in security without a lease or rent, just helping out with a few repairs. The EBs would show up at all hours without calling, waking my friends up in order to do repairs. I mean like it is 8pm, they come in the door declaring they have to carpet the living room right now. 
or they would start mowing the lawn at 10 p.m. which went over real well with the neighbors who already hated their guts because it turned out that EB number two was a racist a-hole who had liberally used the n-word in this majority black neighborhood. There was a mysterious break-in, the thief broke into the window of one bedroom, went past lots of lucrative, easily pawnable electronics, went to the other bedroom and again leaving electronics stole a CD player and several movies. By an amazing coincidence, these were the items that EB number 2 had previously been admiring. Even the police admitted that she had probably staged the break-in to steal his stuff. When we took the window air conditioning unit out of the bedroom during winter, one window pane kept falling inwards. The EBs duct taped it in place and said they would come back and fix it later. Weeks went by, one day the duct tape gave away, the window fell in and one of the panes shattered everywhere. We called to tell them, EB number two told me they had family visiting and wouldn't be able to come over for a few days. I blew my top, told her they could have fixed it weeks ago and now it was a crisis and they were going to fix it tonight because it was freezing cold out. They showed up with a video camera recording everything, sticking it in our faces and declaring that the window must have broken because of something we did and tried to get us to agree on camera it was us. That did not happen, we just said turn the camera off, we don't consent to being taped. They said it was perfectly legal to tape us, I have a BA in journalism and it sure as hell is not. They made a big deal about how they would come out from a big family affair to fix the window temporarily, but it was our responsibility to get it permanently fixed. They recorded themselves cracking the remaining window pane trying to shim it in place which they hurriedly declared was perfectly fine and safe. It's not like we have to worry about gale force winds. EB number two briefly said on camera, knowing full well we live in Tornado Alley. We just stayed silent while he said something about showing the tape to his lawyer. The only thing they got on camera other than us repeatedly refusing consent for filming was me telling the totally embarrassed cousin who had no idea what was going on that they had hauled along as some sort of witness. I guessed that I was sorry they were trying to involve him in this mess. We had one thing going for us that our friends had not, we were on section 8 and had been documenting this. The next day we called the housing authority, they were furious, called the EBs and told them to pay to repair the windows while they determined who was at fault. The repairman they sent visibly winced at the absolute heck job, looked at the rest of the window, told us he could tell we hadn't done a damn thing wrong and not only was he going to tell the housing authority that, he was more than willing to testify in court that we were not at fault should it come to that. When it came time to pay for rent, the EBs told us they had decided in the interest of our friendship, they wouldn't make us pay for the window. Of course, what had really happened was the housing authority told them they should have fixed the window when the problem first appeared, that they were liable for the bill and to stop bothering us about it. Never heard a word about the tape. I'm guessing if and when EB number one showed the tape to a lawyer, he found out that we could sue the ever-loving crap out of him for continuing to tape us after we had told him we didn't consent to it. This incident turned out to be foreshadowing an absolute blowout that occurred about a year later. That will be part 3. And guys if you have watched until here, please don't forget to like the video and post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support the channel. Your help is very much appreciated, it really means the world to me that you guys watch my videos daily and even take the time out of your day to like and subscribe and comment. Thank you so much. And now part 3 of the landlord's story. We lived at the condo for 2 years, we went through a great deal of weirdness with EB1 and EB2, EB1 had a heart attack, EB2, who by the way was not actually married to EB1 number one and didn't own the condo, tried to get us to sign the rent check in her name, not his. Because I need money and I'm not on his bank account. EB number one had some temporary brain damage from the heart attack and EB number two was named Guardian. They also decided to get married, we got pressured into being witnesses at their quickie wedding in the middle of thousands of people that were there to watch the Independence Day fireworks. I think they did it so they could claim they had lots of people at their wedding when really it was four. Now we had figured out by now the EBs were kind of a-holes but we found out it was so much worse. 
they were masters of financial effery, they bought a big beautiful home worth 100k plus. They got a mortgage because EB number one had a good job, from which he got fired from during the house negotiations. Of course he didn't tell them, of course he didn't really look for another job either. Their income consisted of the rent we and the housing authority paid on the condo and EB number two's cashier job at Walmart. My best guess is that they really were making about $22,000 dollars a year maximum. During the short time they had good credit, they got a metric f-ton of credit cards and proceeded to run them all up to make themselves look rich along with loans. I think there might have been a second mortgage in there. All of those gastrointestinal issues of EB number two which necessitated ongoing treatment and occasional hospitalization along with EB number one's heart attack meant they had hideous healthcare bills. They frankly admitted to us that they planned to get as much as they could run up on credit and then apply for bankruptcy to make it all go away. They had done it before, they just suffered through the 7 years with that steaming pile on their credit score and now they were doing it again. They had effing joked about it, well time to commit some more fraud. They felt like they were getting won over on the system. Years ago they had been married but got the marriage annulled and just lived together to save a couple hundred bucks on taxes. I don't think they ever actually paid taxes to tell you the truth. I know for a fact he had more assets but hid them. The only reason he still had the condo is because before he had declared bankruptcy the first time he had put the condo in his high school aged daughter's name so it would not get seized. Now the issue with this is that while they they could buy a lot of things with those cards, they didn't have the ability to pay for services. Anyone who did any work for them was constantly chasing them down for payment or getting shortchanged or the EBs would declare the work was crap and they were not paying for it. They would scream, yell, physically intimidate and always pulling out the I'm going to call my lawyer card as their final defense. EB number one never seemed to realize that these people talk to each other and warn each other about bad customers. So eventually this meant absolutely no one in the entire metropolitan area would work with him. Where a normal person would have realized this meant they should a just stop being dicks and b cut back on projects, these sociopaths just decided that they would prey on poor people in vulnerable positions and manipulate them into doing their work for them. A family losing their home, two young men out on their own for the first time facing homelessness. And us, a disabled woman and a guy working as a freelance programmer who just wanted a decent place to raise a family. They would help out but it always came with a price. None of this crap happened all at once, when we would have noticed it immediately, it was this slow creeping build up. And through threats and guilt and fake friendship, they pretty much trapped us. None of us had the financial resources to get away from them. It was years after this garbage went down before we all saw just how effing toxic these people were. Hell, writing some of this down is making me realize how bad it got. So now that I have established that the EBS were mentally and emotionally abusive sociopaths who thought the world owed them everything on a platter, I will post number 4 when things really went nuts. And ripe stars, I am curious, have you ever had to deal with insane landlords? Let us know about your experiences either in the comments or on r slash ripe stories on reddit. If it is an interesting story, I would be happy to read it in a video if you want. And part 4 of the story is titled EB Landlords from Hell Part 4. Here is where everything comes to a head. Had a nice cold winter, actually got a good deal of snow and one day I wake up, skip down the stairs for coffee and breakfast and scream when I skip into several inches of water. Our building was at the bottom of a slope, the drainage was bad. The snow had started melting which flowed down to our unit, seeped under the living room wall and front door and by the time we woke up the entire living room was flooded. Carpets and furniture soaked, anything that had been on the floor was pretty much toast. Obviously we call the EBS who rush right over, yeah we had something like this happen a couple years ago, EB number one says. He didn't tell us that before we moved in and he didn't tell the housing authority when he signed the section 8. 
Don't worry, the HOA Homeowners Association will take care of this. We were assured SEB number 2 left an absolutely furious screaming message about how they pay dues for exactly this, better get their asses down here and start cleaning this up now, hanging up with a flourish. This is when they told us they hadn't actually paid their HOA dues in years, which means the HOA is not liable. On top of that, when they had their own earlier flooding, the HOA had ruled that it was on them to fix the drainage. Did not bother them at the time, they bought new carpet and furniture on their handy dandy credit card, what they didn't do was fix the drainage. So with us sitting right there, they decided that they were going to lie, they were going to insist that they did pay the HOA dues, they had receipts. EB effin winked at this point and the HOA were lying bullies, use us as pathetic examples of people affected and, big surprise, threatened to tell everyone, call the papers and TV stations and of course threatened to sue the crap out of them. Their thinking was that if they were loud and aggressive enough that they would scare the HOA into doing the cleanup themselves, arguing about who owned who in court. EB number 2 then tells us for this to work we would have to lie to the HOA and to a judge and say that the HOA fees were paid, to which we replied, hell no. We were not committing number one, mortal sin, number two, perjury, and number three, housing assistance fraud for these idiots. They backed off anyway, they said that they had sent someone over to clean up the mess and sent the bills to the HOA. They then handed us three dollar store spray canisters of disinfectant and left. And we did not see them for three days. Oh, we heard from them. We've got someone coming over right now to look at the place. No one comes, repeat several times. Remember me mentioning in part 3 about EB number 1 effing over maintenance people left and right? And how he didn't realize they all talked to each other? Half the people they called heard his name and hung up. The other two half heard that this was a dispute with the HOA, which as it turned out, this particular HOA was well known for being tight assed when it came to repairs. Example, some drunk drove their car right into an apartment which obviously left a huge hole in the wall. Owner and the HOA had a bad relationship, HOA refuses to do repairs, hole was there for months. No one was going to work on this place without money up front which of course the EBs didn't have. Meanwhile as I said three days had gone by with soaked carpet and furniture, they had told us to leave the furniture in place so they could take pictures to show the HOA which didn't happen. So it all just sat there, we tried to soak up excess with towels that was a losing battle. The house slowly started smelling like a bayou, we had absolutely nowhere we could go, obviously the EBs weren't going to pay for temporary accommodations, we pretty much holed up upstairs but we still had to go down there and cook and oh god, it was so damn disgusting, like we were living in the swamp, thanks bed and breakfast. And no, the $3 store disinfectant sprays didn't do a damn thing. Finally, EBS get it through their head that they are not going to be able to get a professional team to clean clean up so they get our friends and husband to help rip out the carpets and toss the furniture that didn't make it. He showed up in a little moving truck where we could put the furniture and stuff that did make it and he said he would pay for that. So he just left the truck there and he had the key. The road in front of our place was really narrow and the truck was taking up a big part of it. People in the complex got pissed off, started complaining to the EBs to move the damn thing out of the way. He got stubborn and said no, even though all he had to do was drive a few feet to a parking spot, it is in front of my unit, it can stay there, was his logic. One guy said, look, move the damn thing or we will have it towed. Go ahead, the EB said, about a truck that was full of our furniture. He didn't care, I seriously think he considered our stuff was his stuff too, because we were living there. We told him, hey, move it to a storage place and pay that, it will be cheaper than just renting a truck by the day, but nope, we ended up begging the guy who wanted to tow the truck to hold off. Now we were keeping the housing authority appraised on what was going on, they sent an inspector over who declared the place uninhabitable, which terminated the lease. However, the drainage situation could be fixed and fairly easily at that. The housing authority gave the EBs the specifications of what they would consider an adequate repair of the drainage. Once that was done, the lease would be renewed, everything would be hunky-dory, they gave him something like three weeks to have it done. 
EB number one goes off to the big orange store he's got a cart with, buys supplies, he brought them over, we looked at the list and pointed out, hey, you screwed up on the sizes, the pipes are too small, take them back. He refused, I strongly suspect he had just run his credit dry there on this purchase and exchanging for the right sizes would bring the total past his credit limit and of course he didn't have enough on him to cover whatever small amount that brought it over. The housing authority had said very clearly that if the repairs were not done the exact way they required, the place wouldn't pass inspection. Which meant section 8 couldn't help us with rent for this place so we would have to move and we had pretty much no money or ability to do so. He did a heck job with the repairs using pipe that were too small to handle the drainage and admitted to the inspector the next time he came around throwing a fit when the inspector tells him the place failed again and he needed to do it the right way. So let's review, half our furniture is in a moving truck that is in danger of being towed, after the carpet is ripped out things don't smell as bad but now we just have the sub flooring. And EB number one deliberately did the drainage repair wrong which means we are living in a place legally uninhabitable. I'm sorry this is getting so long but I'm trying to give this story in legible chunks. It just gets worse in part 5. And now part 5 of the landlord's story. By the way guys I was debating whether to split this up in two videos or not. But I am pretty sure that my audience does not really like cliffhangers so I decided to just read it all at once. However I would really love to know what you think about this. Would you have been okay if I read this let's say 20 to 25 minute story so far in one video and then released the last parts of the video tomorrow? Please let me know what you think about that in the comments. Anyway, so this one starts like this. So during that EB number one decides he's not going to put new carpeting in, he's going to put tiles down. Okay, of course he's not going to pay someone to do this so he and my husband have to do it. This is going to be really fiddly and take a lot of time couple things. Number one, my husband is in the middle of a programming project for his fledgling software company. He has never done something this big before and he is coordinating all this stuff with co-workers, none of whom live in our state and one of whom doesn't even live in our country. This is taking a lot of time like any job would, only difference is that he is working from home which still means he is working. Number two, he has no clue how to lay tile and really really doesn't want to screw it up because we are the ones who would have to live with the mistake. This is how the next several weeks go by. EB number one calls at 6 a.m. says he's coming over. We wait and wait. We don't know what is going on and my husband cannot work on his programming because we don't know when EB number one is going to show up. EB number one calls, says there has been a delay. He will be over there for sure around 10 a.m. No show. EB number one calls, says he's getting lunch. He will be over at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. arrives. I've got to pick up my daughter up from school. I'll be there at 3.30 or 4. Now half the time what happened was that we would get a call at 5 saying he cannot make it today but be ready at 6am tomorrow. Which has wasted my husband's entire day and half the time the day of the other programmers who he was working with. The other half of the time he actually does show up and start working on the tile but for some reason the tile he picked was actually this really expensive, big surprise, heavy stone tile that was clearly labeled for outside use. It was awful, it also turned out Contrary to what EB number one had implied before, he has no clue what he was doing either. You will notice I haven't mentioned EB number two yet, she's got her cashier job so that is part of why she's not showing up and helping. Her spare time however is being spent effing their roommate. Not even being subtle about it either, maybe she thought he would help her breed her exalted super baby. EB number one's response is to start trolling for sex on Craigslist casual encounters, this is before it became a serial killer chum bucket and divorces cost money. They complain and bicker at each other and try to drag us into the middle of all this which we are staying the hell out of when we can. EB number two particularly like to call our house constantly to talk to EB one usually just to scream at him and he would scream back. Of course no work was getting done when this was going on. After two or three hours of work EB number one declared he was tired, hungry, thirsty, remembered he had something to do so that was it for the day. But he was coming back at 6am so we better be ready. Right. My husband finally told him, look, 
come over and work, but I cannot help anymore. I've got work of my own too. Plus, I don't know how to do what you are doing and I don't want to screw it up. EB number one got nasty, started mocking my husband, saying he's being a wuss for not manning up and working on the place. By the way, guys, is it was or wuss? I always forget. Anyway, by this point, we have gotten wise and we have learned to ignore most of the EB crap and EB1's high school level bullying attempts are just downright hilarious. They decidedly don't work. So EB number one drafts his 14 year old daughter into tiling, she makes a mistake, he explodes at her. Sensibly she refused to help anymore and then he started bringing his elderly stepfather alone. Every day they would show up, EB number one made snotty comments basically calling my husband a wuzzy, coward for not helping. His stepdad, who stopped coming after a week of getting yelled at by this guy he helped raise, told us when EB1 was gone on a nebulous errand that he didn't blame my husband at all for not working. He claimed that EB1 had been nice once, that EB2 turned him to the dark side when they met, but I'm pretty sure the a-hole seed had already been planted long before. Of course, the tiles been laid badly, there's obvious mistakes, one is that EB number one noticed and could have fixed but refused to, he just complained instead and it is barely done. I promise I will finish this in the last segment. And the last part to the EB landlord's story. Sorry, this last bit is so long, but I wanted to get it all out. Thanks to all the people contacting me about how much they like my writing too. We have been documenting all this insanity, but with a lot less cursing for the housing authority as well as for personal use. Seeing it all written down really made it clear how screwed up these people really were. My case manager had helped me to see that these people were abusive, we were done with it. And then my case manager said I qualified for a federal program that would pay a deposit it down on a new place that got my hopes up and we decided we were totally through with being pushed around and used for slave labor. Surf uprisings are generally not very funny but this one was. The first of the month came around and the EBs showed up for the rent. First we reminded him that the housing authority had terminated the lease because of the failed inspection, no lease, no rent. Then we handed him an invoice to read. My husband counted up all the hours he had lost for programming on all the days that he promised to come and never did, while programming is worth a lot more than minimum wage we used the letter for simplicity. We had not only already paid all of the rent, even the part that section 8 usually paid, the EBs owed us money. He effin detonated, we had just done to him what he had done to people over the years. Rants about how he reached out to us in our time of need and we were selfish and lazy and how dare we do this to him. There was like 10 minutes of this, I damn near laughed. He actually stomped over to the door, flung it open, pointed outside and screamed, Get out, get out right now. He was seriously surprised when we didn't cower or back. He was really surprised when we told him we were not going to talk to him while he was threatening us and he should leave. He kept up the yelling, started stomping to my husband getting in his face until he saw me dialing 911 and then he blustered his way out the door. We weren't stupid, we knew that they would be back with more bullcrap, we accepted it. Next night they came by and while still in their car stuck a pen and a thick sheaf of papers out to my husband they were stapled and it had been turned over to the last page which just had signatures of EB1 and EB2 and blank signature lines with our names under them. EB number one was driving, EB2 was in the passenger seat with that damn video camera. Sign that, EB number one said. Yeah right, my husband will gladly tell you the last time he signed something without looking at it, he paid for it with four years of his life. He took the papers and flipped through it, he could see most of it was some kind of rant. He flipped to the second to the last page, which was formatted as if it was some kind of important official form, it was some pseudo legal language homemade eviction notice. That was followed by that sneaky signature form at the end, because he seriously thought we were that stupid. My husband said, I'm not going to sign this. That is fine. EB2 snapped and they drove off in a hurry. She acted like she had just officially served us a subpoena. 
The letter was like some sort of bizarre manifesto, page after page of how great they were, how they had accepted us into our family and how they now felt betrayed by our actions. One particular complaint was about how we forced EB number one to work on his birthday. Leaving aside the forced thing, I think this was the housing inspection he failed, we didn't know when the hell their birthdays were because we were not friends. They were acting like we were long term besties when in reality our normal interaction with them before this happened were 5 minutes a month. I really don't think he expected us to give this to our caseworker at the housing authority who was more than happy to take over from there. She had dealt with enough people like this before, we gave her our page and a half log and short descriptions on what happened when our invoice and that insane letter happened. It was like day and night. She had to explain to him, probably in little words, that forcing your tenants to work without compensation is very very illegal. I know he tried to threaten her once, likely figured because she was a woman she would get scared, I wasn't able to make this come across but he viciously hated women, she calmly told him she would call the police if he continued. She was keeping us updated on his latest BS, best and most psycho one was when he claimed my husband and godson were going to burn the condo down and he had proof. One day my godson accidentally butt dialed EB1, EB1 picked up the phone and heard my husband and my godson complaining about him and being an idiot started recording them. They were talking about how EB1 would micromanage their work and one of them said, God it's not like we were going to burn the place down. Oh my god, arson. He triumphantly took his recording to the housing authority, probably thinking this was like those recordings that took down John Gotti. The case manager told him that one, it was really really obvious what the context was and in no way was an admission of crime and two, it was really really illegal to record two people without their knowledge unless you have a court order. Around this time EB1 and EB2 broke up and all the garbage from that took the wind out of his sails. He wanted to have the marriage annulled instead of a divorce, because money, and wanted us to say that he was still brain damaged from the heart attack at the time of the wedding and EB2 manipulated him into it. Yeah, no, wasn't happening. We got out of there into a new place, yay, EB2 moved into the condo illegally and said it was hers when it damn well wasn't, she had a break in so she convinced my 19 year old godson, who she had known since he was a little kid, to move in with her. She's in her late 30s and then they started screwing around. I know it is legal, he was of age, but it was still creepy. EB1 stalked them, my godson and EB2 got restraining orders, my godson pulled a gun on EB1, it took two years to get them evicted, his bid for an annulment didn't work so they had a long long dragged out divorce. This was the year from hell for us because that place we moved into getting away from them. If you had read an earlier post of mine about when some friends of mine got robbed and shot, this is where it happened and it happened a month after we moved in. My husband and I were still trying to have a kid and I was freaking out because I was charting my cycles, my periods were very irregular and I could tell I was not ovulating for months at a time. I'm in my mid 30s at this point, I am worried my biological clock is ticking away. Finally went to a doctor who, after hearing about the EB landlords, the sudden move, the shooting, dealing with our entitled friends, said, your body was telling you in no uncertain terms, this was not the time to have a baby, let's wait 6 months. I got pregnant the next month, we had a scare when I was 6 weeks along and started having horrible pains, but it turned out I'd been puking so hard I pulled a muscle, but when I saw my son's heart beating on the ultrasound in the ER, I just started sobbing. Fast forward 20 weeks later, I'm at a medical center getting the usual ultrasound where, if you are lucky, you get to find out what flavor you are having and I see my godson's sister who is visibly pregnant with a woman I have never met before. She turns out to be EB1's fiance. Oh, I am so happy to meet you, I've heard so much about you, she chirped. I bet you have, I thought to myself. And then she asked for our phone numbers because I'm sure EB1 would love to hear from you. I very carefully said, seeing as we parted on not so good terms, I think it is best for all concerned if we don't get back in contact with each other. She seemed bewildered. I'm not sure what you're talking about. What bad terms? 
He has never said one negative thing about you guys to me. He's always going on about how great you guys are. I could see she was serious. EB1 had completely mentally rewrote the entire two and a half years we knew him and EB2 into some great friendship that mysteriously but amiably drifted away. Glad he has happy memories, but unfortunately, the truth is that he and his ex were horribly manipulative, mentally, emotionally and financially abusive people that treated us like Russian serfs. Thanks for sticking with me this long, writing this has been oddly healing. When some of this stuff was happening we kept thinking, are we overreacting? And it is not that bad. But writing it all out like this really made me realize just how bad it had gotten. And guys, unfortunately, we have already reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. And if you haven't already, please also go to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube, where I upload exclusive Reddit videos starting at just $3 a month. This is a great way to support me in case you are interested and the chance for me to become independent from YouTube revenue. Thank you so much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I hope to see you again tomorrow.